we could talk about transporting the dogs, but what about at what the things you need at a dog show? Say, say you got a dog that's freaking out at a dog show. You know, it's 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 it's. Uh, I think it can lead into it all: anxiety, breathing, all that kind of stuff. You have to be coherent. Like you got to be present. You know what I mean? Don't think he. Oh, he gonna be all right. <laughs> he ain't gonna be all right. Take one. <laughs> like, Wilson told us we gotta do. Well, yeah. <laughs> we, gotta go, we gotta do it. Take yeah, one. that's Wilson's rules. Yeah, <laughs> so they know where to cut. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh, yeah, we can talk about like transporting dogs. Um, I guess you could just say really like when you're when you're when you have the dog outside of its regular conditions, day to day, like being at when home. You take it outside of its comfort zone. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So. So the people have to pay attention to a few things. One, temperature outside. You know, what I mean? if you have a dog who's a house dog and he's used to being in 70 degree weather and all of a sudden you've got him outside in 85 degree weather. In the ball and ass hot sun. I mean, you got to use your common sense, man. That you got to think in your house, it might be you at most you, your husband and your kids. That's it. Or you, your wife, and your kids. You know what I mean? Depend on who we're talking to. You know what I'm saying? So when you take a dog and now you got 50 fucking people looking at it and screaming at it, he's like, you know what I mean? His anxiety is on the next level. And, you know, again, it goes back to what we talked about what last week or two weeks ago. You know, that anxiety, how does that make you feel? Makes you nervous, makes your stomach hurt. You know what I'm saying? Makes you uncomfortable. Sometimes some people start to sweat. You know what I mean? Like you, you, you on a job interview, you, you know, you don't lie on your motherfucking resume. You on that motherfucker, your armpits wetter than shit. You know what I mean? So that's the same concept in humans as in dogs. So I think people need to take that kind of stuff into consideration. I, I, so, yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. No, I agree. I was just going to say that I think that the the term like people like one of the biggest things people say is oh they think their dog is like overheating oh the dog's just hot you know oh we're out there's hundreds of people oh the dog's just hot no you know like exactly what you said um I've learned that anxiety within these dogs is real is is a real number one killer it's yeah number one killer it ain't heat because most people have enough common sense to say oh we're in an air conditioning building we're okay you're right you are. But that is not what's making him uncomfortable, what's making him overheat. It is the anxiousness. It's the fear. It's, I mean, everything in that environment. You know, imagine yourself legitimately, I mean, I don't even know what to say. I mean, if you go to prison, they strip you butt-ass naked in a room of 50 dudes. You're not like, <laughs> yo, what up? What's happening? <laughs> no, motherfucker, you're like, oh. What the fuck is going on? You know what I mean? This isn't the time to say what's up to people. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, that's and that's what people. Analogy. I mean, I mean, think about it. Like that dog is really uncomfortable at that moment. Like, yeah. <laughs> and he's breathing irregular. So, pay attention to the breathing. Pay attention to his if he's being a lot more like lazier than he normally is. Be if he's on edge constantly. You know what I mean? So, I mean, even in your own house, sometimes you got to take the dog away from the fence because the squirrel's on the other side of the fence and he going to kill himself trying to get to that squirrel. It's like over It's like overstimulation. Like before That's I exactly what it is. Yeah, I didn't I didn't think that was a real thing, but I, it really is. Like there's been times where I'm trying to work my son's doing this. The TV's going on, and it's so many things at once. And I'm and I'm just talking about on a small scale, but so many things going on at once. I I just like I'm like I'm freaking out. Yeah, yeah. like no. all right, let's turn the TV off. Let's put the dog away. Let's exactly. put this little motherfucker down for a nap. Yep, yep. Exactly. You know I mean? That's yeah. how it was here. Like yo, my son, bro, my son, he's older now. He's ten. He just turned ten. But like when he was your son's age, bro, he would come running in the house screaming, covered in fucking fire dance. I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah. 
Like, what, the, what are you doing? I had to throw him in a water bowl or for a dog bowl just to get what, the fire ants off of him because he'd be engulfed in them. And you're over there, you know, for an example, just say you had a litter being birthed at that moment. You're in there with the mom fingers knuckle deep, you know what I mean? And your son comes in screaming. Yep. Exactly. What does that dog do? I don't give a shit what you think she's going to do. She's going to jump up. You yep. know what I mean? Puppy hanging out and all. So that is what we have to be mindful of, that that intensity. Because that, that if that is show and there's hundreds of people. Plenty hundreds of, of dogs. Yeah, hundreds of dogs. You know, that you want to talk about overstimulation. That's just, it's it's just like anyone, anyone would. would so you have to, you know, there's a few things you can, people should learn. How to desensitize a dog. There's an easy, some easier ways you can desensitize a dog. You can take a kiddie pool. If anybody on here breeds dogs, nine times out of 10, you got a half chewed up kiddie pool in your house. Everybody got one. And nine times out of 10, half the people watching this, probably 99% of these people watching this drink water bottles. So you keep all your water bottles, keep all your Coke cans or your beer cans, whatever you want to use, and just throw them in the um, throw them in the pool and then throw the food in the pool. So he has to root through it. And that desensitization on his head is a good start. Yeah. And he has to, that sound, the crinkling, the crunching, that touching his head while he's eating and rooting around for food is a good first step to desensitizing a dog. Yeah. Yeah. How they desensitize working dogs. Yep. Why not? Yep. I mean, if you ever paid attention, I told those guys over at Fit Bully, and boom, they started doing it. It works, bro. It really does work. It builds up that desensitization. This is like you and I. You take somebody who was raised in the country, right? Yeah. They're used to cows milling and horses. <laughs> where you take somebody from the city and you put them in the country, I remember when I lived, moved from, I lived in the city, we moved out to the country. I never heard a cricket in my fucking life. <laughs> <laughs> what in the hell is that saying? And yeah. I couldn't get it to go away. Come to find out it was a damn cricket. I never heard a cricket before, but I couldn't sleep because the sound would not stop. Yeah. But somebody who raised in the country, they look at me like, no, this dude's a retard. Yeah. They don't even know what a cricket is. <laughs> but I could sleep through, you know, driving, yeah. loud music, gunshots, shit like that. Don't even phase me. I sleep right through it. Mm. But a cricket kept me awake. Yeah. So it, it it makes a lot of sense. The the whole what what you you're accustomed to, what you get your dogs accustomed to. I mean, yeah. the simple things, a, like even car rides. You know, like that's like the easiest one. Take the car, take the dog for a car ride because like. I've seen numerous around of dogs wind up getting like they wait till the dog's older and then the dog starts to feel nauseous when it's in the car or wants to vomit, wants to shit, um, all kinds of stuff, you know, because they were never really because the, the anxiety. Yeah. They don't understand because what happens is anytime you take a dog and take it off its own four legs, when you put it in the car, he ain't moving it. Yep. So he's like. It's almost like being on a roller coaster. You're like, oh, yeah. you know what I mean? You don't know what's coming next. That's how he feels. Yeah. So exactly. you have to look at it from a human's perspective. A human's perspective, I put you on a blindfold yeah. on a, a roller coaster. You don't know if we're going uphill, downhill, or going backwards. Exactly. But you're like this the whole time. <laughs> you know what I mean? And that's what he's basically doing until you're like, man, I'm on a roller coaster. Let me just hold on tight so I don't get bounce you know yeah. bounce around and eventually he'll get used to it but then there's some dogs that don't get used to them because they have motion sickness and you yeah. have to know that as well you know what i mean and that's basically what we want to tell you guys about in this video like this video is going to tell you guys some of the medications that you can get over the counter and some of the medications that you can speak to your veterinarian about in regards to traveling yeah. um in regards to moving in regards to being in those anxious situations and dog shows and take it on, for an example, just say you live out in the country and your dog get bit by a spider or a copperhead. I live out here in the country, copperheads are real big. If my dog can't drive to the vet, he gonna die on the way to the vet from the snake bite. Yeah. If you wanna breed your dog and she can't ride in them, the car, you might not be able to get a C-section. This is true. 
because I sent you your box. So you're like, all right, we're cool. You don't think of it. You're not planning ahead. Like, all right, we're cool. She's 63 days. Let's take her, put her in the car. <laughs> she loses the whole litter because she died in the back seat. Yeah. I, I've heard I've heard it happen. I've heard it happen. I've seen it happen. You yeah. know what I mean? I've seen being in the car with people like, yo, that dog ain't fit to make it, bro. You ain't never put her in a car before? Nah. <laughs> yeah. And 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 I feel like with the car thing, to be honest, like that's one of those things that you do that as 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 early on as possible. You know, even if it's sim somewhere simple, you know, even if you're not putting the dog down, you just you I'm going to uh, CVS or Walmart real quick, you know what I'm saying? Carrying the dog in my arm, you know? Um but but desensitizing them. I've I've found that the the younger that I do it, the the better off they usually are, you know? And yeah, and yeah. I mean, you'll get better results the younger you start. Just like in a child, the better you the, the better a child is at a sport is because they you started them young. Exactly. So, so now let's, let's, let's backtrack like you were saying, right? So let's talk about, all right, we're already there now. The dog, we're at a show, the dog's freaking out, right? What are the, some of the things that we would, we, would we would want to have on standby just in case, or, or yeah, we can start with that. What are some of the things we want to have so, for at a show? I, I, I think, here's right? the thing. I think if we, there's a saying in the service when I was in the Marines, proper planning prevents piss poor performance. The seven P's, I think is what they call it. Anyway, so if you know your dog can't travel well, don't expect to get to the show and him be calm the minute you walk into what you think is air conditioning. Yeah. Like, it's still freaking him out. Yeah. And so there is something called DIC. And vets call it DIC. It has a really long scientific name, guys, and I'll be the first to tell you I don't know how to say it. But they call it DIC. It's called Death is Coming. That's the short terminology that they tell themselves. And what happens with dogs like that, you feel as though the dog is fine. 24 hours later, he's still fine. 48 hours later, he's stiff. What happened more than likely is one of his internal organs tore, ruptured, or ripped, and he bled out. Wow. That's what happens. So a lot of people think, oh, I'm good. He calmed down. You ain't out of the window yet. Wow. You're not. You're not out of the window for 48 hours. This is the textbook answer is what the textbook answer tells you. It tells you 48 hours. Ideally, you want to make it 24 hours without diarrhea or vomiting or anything like that. And then another 24 hours with just he's calm. You know what I mean? And that's yeah. what the textbook answer says. So uh, what I tell people is if we can prevent it before we get to that point, we don't have to. I don't have to scare you. I don't have to tell you what DIC is. I don't have to tell you. And it could have been as something as Dramamine. Everybody, you can go right to CVS and buy Dramamine. It's the shit you take to go on roller coasters. Like for cruises too, right? It's, yeah, the it's motion sickness pill. Yeah. That's all it is. Sometimes it's just the motion of being off its feet and not controlling the speed for a dog. You know what I mean? Something as simple as that can make them queasy. So you can give them Dramamine. And is that, that is... Is that in the book? What, Dramamine? Yeah. No, I could probably look it up. I don't remember if it is or not. Yeah, I mean it has a scientific name, but oh uh, probably you know, scientific name, but I just know Dramamine because you can buy it over the counter. Like my son has to take Dramamine to ride rides. Like he has to, or you're blah 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 blah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or somebody's not gonna be happy. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. But, uh but he loves rides, but so we just give him Dramamine. The only thing is the side effect of Dramamine for humans and dogs, it makes you sluggish, it makes you drowsy. That's a good side effect when you're trying to take a dog from point A to point B sometimes. Yeah. That leads into the second one. If you have a dog that you're trying to slightly sedate and you don't know anything about sedations, you can use over-the-counter Benadryl. It does the same thing to dogs as it does to me and you. And the, the I will give you that one. It is one milligram per pound. So if the dog weighs 25 pounds, it takes one pill. If the dog weighs 75 pounds, you can give it three pills and you can give it every two to four hours. I can promise you put after about four hours or six pills, that's something that's going to be like. Yep. Uh -oh, little man there. <laughs> what up, little man? You gotta so, guys. Hey, don't feel bad. My son be a little. <laughs> hey. Say hi. <laughs> big man. He getting big, man. Yeah. So, those are the two things that I would tell you that you can get over the counter that 
could possibly save your dog's life. And they are both extremely cheap. You can go right to the dollar store and get both of them for under $5. So if you do the, think about the math, $5, this dog costs $5,000. And I would definitely tell people to, hey, you might want to do a dry run with the dog just to take him to Lowe's and see how he acts before you put this dog in this stressful environment with a thousand dogs and a thousand people around him. And then you end up losing the dog. Was it worth it? Yeah, no, that's true. And 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 exactly like you have you have, you know, uh, uh, I would imagine your Lowe's would probably be closer to home. So you have a quicker response time to be able to get the dog home. And 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 that's what I saw at this show. The last show that I went to, you know, it was let me rephrase. It was the second to last show that I, I went to. Um, they had a dog there. It was in the AC. Dogs panting heavy and everybody's standing there like, oh, get alcohol, get lemon juice. This is and that. And the dog's panting heavy. And I'm like, listen, what you need to do is get the heck out of here. Put that dog in your car. And get it to you know wherever is most comfortable, but not here. <laughs> yep. Well, I mean, so the, the the thing is, is dogs sweat through their paws. That's why people tell you to put the alcohol and that stuff on their hands. I understand that. I before you guys think that we don't understand why you do that. Dogs sweat through their pa their pads of their feet and actually their chest, like their breast area. That's where they sweat from. So that's why I tell you to do that. And you are 100% correct. You are not eliminating the problem. The problem is, why is the dog stressed out? That's the first question. Is it stress from the ride there? Is it stress from the thousands of people looking at it in all? Like, it's cool to have that dog that stops traffic. I, I understand it. But he's going to stop for damn sure if you don't get him the hell out of him. Yep. Like, he, he, he ain't stopping shit no more yeah. if you don't get him calmed down. And what I tell people, I, a lot of people always ask me why I prefer plastic crates versus the wire crates. I like plastic crates because it gives the dog a den to feel comfortable. One. Two, if shit ever popped off, I can literally get a gallon of water, pour it in the bottom of that plastic crate, put that dog in it, and let him sit in that water. I don't give a shit if he looks like he pissed himself because tomorrow he'll still be alive. And I can give him a bath. That's true. No, that's definitely. That's why I personally prefer plastic crates for travel. And it, and it cuts down on the hair in the back of your car. That's just a bonus. I'm not, well, you know, well, that's, yeah. a bonus. Well, that's a whole other thing in itself, actually. Now that you made me think about it, this is just something I, nat I just naturally do. I, I didn't really put a whole lot of thought into it. But I always really like when I'm tra tra uh, traveling with the dogs, I usually have them in a crate. You know, I usually don't have them loose because the, the it's kind of like a den for them. You know what I mean? It's yeah, a den. Yeah. So they feel more relaxed because they're in a den. That's one, two. I like putting a little bit of a, I take, if if I have a dog who's a little, you know, uneasy, sometimes I'll take a towel, I'll dip it in cold water and I'll put it in there with him. Mm. Just so it feels comfortable and it's cooling. Yeah. And then you put that mix with the air conditioning, it, it does, you know, it pretty does, it knocks some temperatures down, you know what I mean? Definitely. So, um, the other thing is, is if you want to talk to your veterinarian in regards to medications, we've given you two medications that you can get over the counter, which is Dramamine for motion sickness, and it will make the dog a little sluggish. Two, we told you about Benadryl that will help the dog relax a little bit because it is, it is a, a ant, what is the word? Uh, antihistamine. There you go, antihistamine. So antihistamine makes you drowsy, just like it'll make a dog drowsy. Not. He cool. I can see him. <laughs> so the other, there's a few medications that you can ask your vet about. You can ask them about trazodone. Trazodone is a good medication um, for acute relaxation. I'll use that word. Um, the other options is uh, you can ask them about uh, ace promazine. That's another option. Ace promazine is a mild sedative. Sorry about that. My son's playing with a, a progesterone machine. But uh, <laughs> uh, it's on. I, I was just going to chime in with the whole ACE thing. Um, I, I like ACE. Um, like you said, it's a light sen s s sedative. Um, and I find that the dogs do really good on it. Um, it doesn't put them to sleep. It makes them like more like, what would you say? Like NyQuil? Like, like drunk. It makes them drunk. Yeah. Yeah. Trazodone is like 
they're almost kind of like high. They're like, and and it's actually, like, I know a lot of vets will prescribe trazodone. And now I think pretty easy prescription to get from a vet. You just say you have an anxious dog and nine times out of 10, they'll give you a prescription for it. It's pretty cheap too. And, and, and that's what I was going to actually ask you on here. Cause that was actually something that I had asked you off camera, you know, a, a while back when I had learned first learned about like ACE and all that stuff. So how do you feel about using like something like ACE versus like a trazodone? I don't depends on what I have accessible to. And I I personally like to do medicine prior to the problem. I don't like when people call me and the dog is already ah, ah, can't breathe. And then they want me to fix it. I mean, it's fixing it right now is not the problem. You gotta figure out the dog, what's wrong with the dog, and get him out of that situation, like you said. And the problem is they've driven eight hours to be at this dog show. They want everybody to see the dog. And I understand that, guys. Just don't think that I'm trying to be ugly about it. I understand it all too well. But at the end of the day, you want to see the dog tomorrow, too. So sometimes it's not worth the, yeah, add a boy. So you can the very next day make a post RIP. You know what I mean? Yeah, you you can. Sometimes it's just not worth it. You know what I mean? Like I've been in a ring where the dog was acting irate. I'd driven eight hours to show this dog and I couldn't, you know, he wanted to chew the damn judge apart. I just walked out. I excused myself. I apologized and I walked out because it wasn't, the moment wasn't right. You know what I mean? So um, the other medication you can ask your dog, your vet about is called fluoxetine. Um it's like volume for dogs. I mean, this is like volume for you and me. You can take fluoxetine too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? They give it to it. They give it to people who like have small disorders, like like pulling their eyebrows out and stuff like that. It's like a, they give it to you. They give you like ten or twenty milligrams of fluoxetine. Same thing they can give dogs. You mm -hmm. can get it. Fluoxetine is more of a built-up um, medication. It's not an acute medication where it immediately is effective. It's one of those things that has to be built up in the system eventually to where you see the effects. And so, and, and, uh, just I, not to cut you off, but something I did want to mention it is actually a story of what happened to uh, a friend of mine. It, and this is something actually to, to really think about is I almost want to say, if you can, to a degree, like we talked about going to Lowe's or something like that, like trying to create a controlled setting or a controlled environment, right? And testing this out, right? Even even if it was like, say you have a dog that's really high sprung, high strung, and you were trying like the trazodone or whatever the case may be. I don't I don't think it would be wise to wait until you need it to to do it. Like, oh, okay, we got a show coming up. Let's use this now and go. Like. You know, do some yes, kind of because there's out. adverse reactions. You gotta remember the adverse reactions. The yeah. adverse reaction, damn, fucking flies, man. It's, it's nice as hell outside today. So now all the flies came out. Wow. Um, so the adverse reaction to ace promazine is a very hyper dog. Mm -hmm. So again, that's why some of these medications that we might know them, we might even know how to dose them. We don't recommend the dosages. Because we know the adverse reactions. The adverse reactions to ace promazine, it is hyper. It, it, borderline, depending on the dog, it can be it. aggressive. <laughs> you know? So that's why, you know, I love your idea of the dry run. Let me give the dog ace and see if I can cut his nails. You know what I mean? It's a good medicine for cutting nails if you got a little bit of a wiry dog that doesn't like his nails cut. It's a great medication for it. Because I'm going to give you an example is I have a friend of mine who he had beautiful English bulldogs. I mean, you talk about from the UK had to have spent, you know, a, a pretty penny on them. I would imagine 10 to 20 grand, you know, easily. And he had his boy and um, the vet had prescribed him trazodone, but he never gave it to the dog. It was for up, it was leading up into this trip. Well, when he gets on the by the time he gets on the plane and they're taking off, the dog's already now breathing heavy you know, um, going crazy. And there's really not much he was able to do. Mid-flight, the dog passes away. And just now the, he's he's sitting on the plane the rest of the flight with the dog dead.
you know? Um, so that's why the dry run, I believe is, is ideal. You know, I'm not, I'm not going out and saying, uh, you know, give your dogs medication for no reason, but, um, like we said, the adverse effects and, and, and just making sure that you'll be all right when it comes time that you actually do decide to go wherever you're traveling to, you know? I think it's imperative that people take the dog out more than just their backyard sometimes. So you can see what's going to happen. And then you can know how to, I mean, these people, we as breeders, myself included, we invest countless hours and days and months and years into dogs for our peers to see the dog. And I understand that we want these people to see our productions and our, you know, our dog that we're very proud of. But if he ain't going to see the very next day, all that accomplishment and that attaboy on the back means absolutely nothing because it didn't equate to any stud fees. Well, well let's take it a step further. I, oh no, I agree. Let's take it a step further though. Like, so that this actually happened to one of one of my um mentors dogs is they had a dog that was um was a very and the crazy thing is like the dogs that we're talking about, like we deal with a lot a lot of the brachycephalic breeds. So they're usually like, you know, heavier bodied shorter muzzle dogs that already are at more of a disadvantage than say you know i don't know like a labrador or something like that that could most likely breathe a lot better but um what i was just going to say to chime in on what you were saying is like let's let's take it a step further and and, and what if it had nothing to do with even you don't even go to shows you know what i'm saying or you don't go to shows or any of that kind of stuff but what happens now if and this is what happened to them you sell the dog Someone turns around and wants to buy your dog, your male, your female, whatever the case may be, for big money. It can't be transported, and 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 that's what happened. They had a dog. Um, it was a, it was a, an extreme bully at the time. You know, the extreme class, and um, the dog. They sold the dog for a very you know a, a large sum of a large sum of money. You know, um, and the dog literally died in the process. Going to I think it was I think it was China, you know. So, um, in those kinds, and, and, and I knew the dog already, um, it was questionable if it would make it because it had a little bit of an episode at a show. So it goes to show like, that's a good thing to bring up. So what people don't understand is episode one on a dog's health. It does make the dog more susceptible to episode two, three, four, and five. Because what happens is the skin thickens in the throat. So now, instead of having a hole this big, you have a hole this big, then a hole this big. So every time they have an episode like that, it's like scar tissue that builds up in the back of the throat almost. You know what I mean? And it can cause to where the dog can overheat faster. It can overheat again. And it could be less than what it took the first time. Like wow. people don't understand that. Like there's a, that's a big thing. You know, a lot of times you, you'll hear dogs like, oh, he had two heat strokes. Um, he sounds like he's rattling now. You might want to get him in the house. You know what I mean? Like, because he's going to be more susceptible to it because his, that's just what happens. You know what I mean? And, and actually to even to chime in on that, I know of a dog that got um the the surgery so here's another thing is that you could turn around and think okay let me get the surgery like whatever surgery to allow the dog to breathe better and all this kind of stuff and i know someone who got the surgery and i've done it a few times and and the dog's died I'll, I'll see so, so scar tissue so there's a proper way of doing it we'll just say they're supposed to go in every two to three months after the dog's healed and take another We'll just say millimeter. Please don't judge. I don't know the exact number. They're supposed to just shave and then let it heal. And then you go back in again two or three more months later, another shave. You know, you're just basically taking off very small pieces of skin. That's it. You're not going in and just chopping the whole hole wide open. What is there? Okay. No, because I was looking at the screen and behind your head, it looks like there's a person, like a silhouette of a person standing with like an axe or something. Yeah, we had a birthday party for my son. It's Jason. <laughs> I was like, wait a second, what the? <laughs> yeah, they're all over the house. They put them everywhere. My son and my daughter put them all over the windows and stuff. But, you know, I've had that surgery on numerous dogs. And every I've actually had them wake up and actually breathe worse when they woke up. 
because the swelling in the throat, because they just went in you know, like a butcher and just ch 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 just cut the whole thing off. So thinking it was going to be able to make the dog breathe way better. And no, the swelling in the throat. I mean, he woke up wheezing. Wow. I was like, oh, shit. Yeah, yeah. And he didn't make it. He didn't make it maybe three months before he passed away. Wow. See? So, um, yeah. So, I mean, but, that's, but see, that's why I try to tell people. It's about knowing your dog. Knowing, you know, I can tell you that I can take Rolls Royce. I can take Rolls Royce anywhere and we'll be okay. I can tell you my wife can't take him because he has to. She can take him anywhere as long as she stays next to him. That's her. That's. You know, she's his blanket, his safety blanket. You know, mommy, <laughs> he starts barking uncontrollably until she comes back and literally just does this with her fingers in the kennel. And then he'll go right to sleep. Wow. But you have to know that about the dog. Yeah. You got to know that about your dog. I could take him anywhere. He'd just be like, oh, man, dad took me out, whatever. Yeah. But if my wife takes him to a show, I told her, when you take him to the show, you have to give him a little bit of trazodone. And you're gonna have to put your fingers in this crate like a pacifier. And she she called me. She was at the show in Michiana. She called me. She was like, "I'm outside. Listen, raw, raw." You could hear him like screaming across the fucking uh, convention center for her. It, and she was like, "But I gotta sit there in the chair right next to him with my fingers in the crate." You see, yeah. so I agree. Like, I think the biggest thing is knowing your dog. I agree because like I said, back to the example we were talking about with the woman where I'm standing there and I'm like, you need to get the dog out of here. Everyone else is kind of like, let's do this, let's do that, let's do this. And I'm like, you're not, you're not addressing, you know, the the the, the biggest elephant in the room, the situation. Um a, a, another example is like uh, a stud dog that we had that he would get very he would act he he he'd want to get to all the females when we get to the show. So one of the things we had to do was we wanted to pull him before the show, and then he was perfectly fine after that. So just knowing the dog, you know, hey. You I know. have a male here, Mac. He's super male aggressive. I can't walk in past another male. Oh, Cannot. Wow. Like, I can't even be within five feet. So when I wanted to show him, I literally had to get a booth right next to the opening of the, the uh, ring, walk straight in. Yeah. Because I mean, he could he's in a kennel with a female, no problems. But he does not like male dogs at all. And he will give them once within five feet. It's like he knows that it's a male. And I can see the hair on the back of his neck standing up already. Wow. See? And this is like, all right, well, I'm not gonna keep showing this dog because I'm putting this dog's life in in jeopardy. Not because of what he can do, but it's because of he's going to be all ha, ha, trying to get to that other dog. And it's not worth it to me. It's not worth taking the dog out for people to see because of my ego. You know what I mean? And a lot of times what kills these dogs is our ego. Because I want you. I want Angel to see Mac. I want Angel to see Rocky. Come on, man. You got to see him. Oh, I'll be at this show. I mean, you know what I mean? I ain't driving all the way to New York to show him to you. But hey, well, there's a show in Pennsylvania. I'll meet you there. All right, who? So we bring the dog and everybody we like. I don't give a shit what anybody says. We like the oohs and the ahs and dams. We like that. And so when we start hearing it, we, our ego takes over and we don't pay attention to the dog as much. Yeah. You know what I mean? And we just need to, we just need to pay attention to the dog. All right, he's uneasy. I'm sorry, guys. He's worth more to me alive than dead. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean simple things. I mean, like with, with my dogs, you know, I, I'm 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 looking at. You could generally look at a dog and see if they're on edge or not. You know, I mean, I'm looking. Is the hair standing up? You know, I'm just trying to think of simple signs that. Uh, I, I would can he get at. comfortable? I mean, basic common sense. Can he get comfortable? Is your dog like? Hmm. Where the dog show? What's up, yeah. man? Hey, yep. how are you? Yep. Or is he like? You know what I mean? Everything that walks past. He's all, rah, 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 rah. Yep. this anxiousness turns into, <sighs> turns into, <sighs> turns and, into. And usually you have, <laughs> usually you have enough signs. Usually the dog doesn't, yeah, you don't just show up and the dog's <sighs> ready to. No, 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 you could show up and the dog be like that because you didn't listen to the signs in the back of the car. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, well, yeah, but it usually it, it gradually gets worse. It usually yes. doesn't just go from zero. It doesn't happen 
when I say immediate, it can happen immediate, but it doesn't happen immediate like a bee sting immediate. You know, some people yeah. who are highly allergic to a bees that get stung and boom, 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 air lift him out. No, it don't, it ain't like that. It's hey, I just want to let you know I'm allergic to bees, but I'm not definitely allergic. Yeah. And they start scratching, and I just need an EpiPen within two hours so I don't dig my skin off. You know what I mean? That's kind of what you have. You have like a two-hour window. I mean, you genuinely have at least a 30 hour, I mean a 30 minute window to realize that all right, this wasn't a good idea. Let me take him back home. So so before before we actually wrap it up, so say say we're already there, right? Say the dog is already there and and get too many people to ask me this. There's no medication that everybody asks me what medication can you give a dog that it's already there. I I, I would you know, some people say, Can I give it ace? I can't answer that question, honestly, because I don't know if he's going to have an allergic reaction to Ace. And if I give him Ace and I send him over the fucking cliff, you'll be mad at me and blame me and try to sue me. You yeah. see what I'm saying? Because now it's not a sedative. I just basically gave him atropine. So he's all like, dun, 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 dun. you know what I mean? Like that movie Crank. Like I don't, <laughs> I don't take him over the, the limit. And then Trazodone, it's pretty quick, but it ain't that quick. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So now all we have to do is we have to, one, like you said, take the dog away from the situation. Whatever is stressing him out, whatever is making him hot. So if it's hot outside, get him somewhere cool. Yeah. Don't, But don't send him in the shock, people. You know, don't put him in an ice cold bath. That's shock. You're just going to shock the dog. What I tell people is just take cold water from the tap, fill a plastic crate up, put the dog in the crate. That's yeah. what I tell people. That's legitimately what I do when I have a dog that overheats or gets too hot. And I take a plastic crate from Walmart. I don't even know what they call them these days, berry crates. Put the dog in, and I fill the bottom of it to where, you know, that lip where the gate goes on to? I fill it all the way up in there to where I can literally look like the dog sitting in at least an inch of water. He ain't going to drown, I promise you. I've done it too many times. There ain't no dog drowning in that motherfucker, you know what I mean? So uh, that I've seen, you know, the, the shit with their hands. That's why when dogs are hot, they stand in their water bowls because they're trying to cool themselves off. So that's what we're doing. We're giving them a chance to stand in their own water bowl. Um, two, you can put stuff on their, pee, their feet. I've seen, you know, ice cubes in the old. Uh, you know what I, mean? I was going to mention that, but I, I didn't. I. That so I was gonna mention that that's what happened with uh the like I like I said what I've had to do it before one of my dogs to save his life. I had that big dog bear, I had to do it to him. Yeah, that's what happened with my mentor's dog. They um they were at the ABKC show. Um this was years and years and years ago in New York. And uh yeah, the dog started overheat, was a super, you know, was a super extreme dog, you know, very heavy dog. Had the anxiety, they left, and and he, uh, yeah, he took an ice cube and put it in the dog's butt, you know, and it helped. And so, just because you eliminate the dog from the anxiety, that doesn't mean it's going to go away like that. So, if he was anxious when he got out of the car, I mean, I don't recommend just throwing him in the car and driving home. That's not what I'm telling you. What I'm telling you is, put him in the car, put an air conditioning on, put a little bit of water in there with him, and just sit there. Just legitimately sit there yeah. and let the dog calm down some. You see what I'm saying? Well, Don't drive home the next four hours. <laughs> <laughs> that motherfucker in the background sound like a damn diesel engine. Yeah. That ain't helping us any. What I also do too, I mean, and, and I know this, a lot of breeders already know this, but we're just going to just say it's for the people who, who may not know, you know, with the whole, um, like, the rubbing alcohol and the lemon juice, you know, um, what I do is if a dog is already kind of at that point, I'll take some of the like green rubbing alcohol, pour it on its paws, pour it under its armpits. And what happens is the evaporation from the alcohol. Cause if you pour alcohol on anything, you know, that's why they give you alcohol wipes for your phone is it, 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 it clears it off, but it, it evaporates very quickly. So you're kind of, you're recreating the sweating process. What helps you cool down when you sweat is, is the evaporation of the sweat on your body. So the same thing for the alcohol when you put on the dog's paws or under its armpit. You pour it on, it starts evaporating, starts helping to cool the dog down. So that's one thing. And then the lemon juice, where the lemon juice is supposed to be where, you know, you squirt some in the dog's mouth and it helps get the, the, the dog will spit like the phlegm or the foam out, you know. And it um, helps restrict. Or restrict where it opens up the airway, supposedly. 
Yeah. So those are two things that, you know, you could always carry in the back of your car or something, you know, and, and, and just remember, we talked about Benadryl and um, Dramamine, two medicines that you can get over the counter. And if you have a pretty decent vet, you can talk to him about uh, Ace Promazine, Trazodone, or Phylloxetine. Phylloxetine is a long term, so I don't necessarily. I mean, it's a good medicine, but it's a long term. It don't ha it don't happen in like an hour. <laughs> Trazodone will happen in about an hour. You know what I mean? Uh, Ace is about it. Ace it all depends on how you give it. If you give it intravenously, if you give it intramuscularly, if you give it orally, it, it all has its different rates of metabolization. Uh, metabolization. Ace is pretty fast. Ace is pretty fast. It is, but when you like put it in the muscle, it's not as fast. The 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 last thing that I just want to say is to encompass what we've been talking about is if if you are mindful and and you you really are are looking at the body language of your dog, getting to know your dog, you really should like it should be very minimal that you'll even get to on 100 what we're talking about we're now sticking ice cubes and lemon juice and all kinds of stuff like that you know um if you're very mindful it, it, it's it, you're going to minimize the chances of you i'm not saying it can't happen but you're going to minimize the chances of now being in an emergency situation where you're like okay i need i need to get rubbing alcohol this 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 this, this and that you know um i've for the amount of times that i've had dogs that kind of have gotten to that point there's a lot more dogs that i was able to catch it way quicker and stop the situation from getting to 100. You get what I'm saying? So maybe for every, you know, 10, for every, uh, I'm sorry, 10 dogs, maybe only one dog got to that point, but the other ones I was able to stop because I was able, I was always, I'm on, I'm on alert, you know? So that's what we're kind of getting well, the at. The other thing you can do is if you know traveling to the vet isn't, uh, isn't easy for a dog, again, you can talk to your vet and say, hey, can I get some trazodone I want to bring in? Wishbone. All right, cool. Here's a pill or two. You know what I mean? All right, cool. Give this to him 20 minutes before you get in the car. Boom. You see what I'm saying? Like you can be proactive instead of reactive because being reactive in this situation might end in a bad situation for you. Being proactive or like you said, being alert and aware of what your situation is, it will definitely help you survive the situation oh, let me rephrase it the dog survived the situation because you're going to survive the situation but the dog might not you know what i mean even my borble we went to go we were going to go upstate for a few hours and that was the longest she was going in the car ride and um when we hopped in the car i'm not gonna lie it had been a little while since i had taken her out uh it was just craziness going on here at home so we hadn't been able to go out on vacation or anything like that um so i noticed she started she started to get queasy she threw up I said, all right, no, this 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 isn't this isn't gonna work. And because I thought we were just gonna just like we had before, because she had been in the car before. Um, but she's also very young. So for her, she's a much bigger dog now. We threw her in, and like I said, I could tell she was off. So I said, All right, you know what? Come 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 back around. Let me get her calm first. Let me, you know, um get her situated. Let me put her in the crate because she's the only dog that I'm I may not put in the crate because she's been used to going in the car, you know. I didn't expect that. So like yet again, caught it early before, you know, it potentially could have gotten worse, you know? So just reading your body's dog, reading your dog, reading your dog's body language, you know, and just being mindful that is, you're going to be able to stop things before they get worse. That's, that's really what we're trying to convey. So anyway, guys, um, we hope this information was helpful, it was useful, and we'll see you guys on the next episode. All right, guys.